we have Justice Kevin Briscoe here from the Board of Directors of NYCHA, who will welcome us with some opening remarks and introduce us to the conference. Good morning. How do I go after that? Let's give her another round of applause. Good morning. On behalf of the National American Indian Court Judges Association, I welcome you to uh, this uh, exploring the intersection between tribal courts and peacemaking, including alternatives to detention. Uh, I would like to thank our partners who have brought us together here, the Columbia School of Law and also NARF, and also our host, the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. Uh, one thing I want to say about the National American Indian Court Judges Association, our mission is to strengthen and enhance the tribal justice systems. And I know there are a lot of things out there that we've been working with and hopefully we'll continue to because I think, you know, tribal courts are, have been out there, but we have been, I think, unjustly been denied a lot of things with our courts. And I think everybody does a great job, you know, but they don't see the good work we do. And one thing that we bring to the table is peacemaking. And I mean, peacemaking has been a world, did worlds of good for our court because uh, it's more or less, you know, uh, has a positive uh, effect on our people because going to regular court, you look at it as a win loss situation, but going to peacemaking court is a win win, -win situation for our tribal members. So, uh, other than that, I don't want to keep you here, but. Um, one thing of note, um, we had a good week. I don't know if you follow football, but Mississippi State beat Texas A&M over the weekend. We're number three. Just uh, wanted to put that out there. And um, other than that, we hope to beat Auburn next week. So thank you, and hopefully you have a great conference. And welcome. Okay, so something we wanted to do that's a little bit different, we wanted to kind of have make a mental note and, and share with everybody what tribal nations are here. So we're going to ask you all, starting over at this side, to stand up and announce your name and what nation you come from or, or you work for, whichever one. And that's it, not too much introduction or anything, but we want to see who's in the house, basically. So, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm Michael Smith, uh, I'm a Chickasaw, and I'm also a judge for the Sacred Fox Nation. I want to be the open for that time to lose this. I'm a retired fellow with this great podcast. I'm Joey, do you see the peacemaker for the Alabama Shell Town in Houston, Texas? Good morning, my name is Rosalie Chavez. I'm from New Mexico. I work for New Mexico Legal Aid, and I'm from San Diego. Good morning, my name is Matthew Randi. I'm a tribal judge for the Pulpega Bank of Pottawatomie in Michigan. I'm Stacy Gettick. I'm from Pulpega Bank of Pottawatomie, and I work for the tribal court. Chick Ma, good morning. I'm Sherry Hart. I'm a Chickasaw citizen, and also a special district judge for the nation. I'm Ian Fisher. I'm a fellow at the NARC. Thank you. 
mind or the Thanks everyone, You're welcome, thanks for coming. I'm Brett Shelton, I'm a member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe from the Pioneer's Reservation in South Dakota and a staff attorney at the Native American Rights Fund, Bernard. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what the conference is going to be like. First, I want to say I'm Sean Watts, I was born and raised right here in the Cherokee Nation and a proud member of the nation, but I got lured by the bright lights of the big city and so now I'm a professor at Columbia Law School. So, we tried to set this up so that you would have an opportunity to all be together as one and sort of share some of your wisdom in a big group and then also give you the opportunities to break out into smaller sessions where some of the subject matter might be more tailored to what you came to learn. And so we're going to start the morning, each morning with a plenary. This morning we have uh, positive aspects of peacemaking in tribal communities and if there's one thing we know about peacemaking is we highlight the positive, so we're going to start that off right away. And we'll give you a short break to be able to get some coffee, stretch. I think the restrooms are right that way in case you need to do that at some point, which I guess you will. Uh, and then we're going to start with the breakout sessions. Um, oh no, I'm sorry, we have a, we have a number of groups. Like peacemaking doesn't operate in a vacuum, that's going to be the importance of context. So there'll be some subject matter there about how to place peacemaking in, in the context of your particular tribe. We're going to have lunch. Everybody will be on their own for, for that. There are a few restaurants here, and then there are some clothes that, that you should be able to get to. And then in the afternoon, we're going to break out. We have sensing alternatives. We're going to talk about ways to avoid taking people and incarcerating people. And then approaching cultural justice with indigent defendants. That's going to be a, a conversation about how to make sure that the poor are adequately represented in, in, in a traditional way. And then peacemaking programs at work in tribal nations, especially if you're looking for something where you want to get a sense of what's, what other tribes are doing and how that may help you shape what you do or what you might do in the future. Then another stretch break for you so that you have the opportunity to move around, get to, know, to talk to one another a little bit. And in the afternoon, we're going to do peacemaking from the ground up where we'll talk about essentially how to get started and some of the choices you need to make along the way. And then in the uh, cultural appropriate justice with indigenous defendants, that'll be a, a, another panel on that same subject matter. So if you wanted to go to it in the earlier session but had another obligation uh, to another panel, then that'll give you the opportunity to do that. And then peacemaking programs at work in tribal nations, I'll give you that same option again in case. And then that will be it for the evening, and we'll have the opportunity to go out to dinner, uh, sort of mingle with one another. We'll see you back here bright and early in the morning for uh, a welcoming at 8.30.
And then we'll hear about peacemaking from the bench, where we'll have several judges talk about how they are able to conduct peacemaking in the context of their court settings. And then we're going to break out in the morning again. We're going to explore the human and fiscal costs of incarceration. We'll talk about some of the costs that come along with putting people uh, in jail as opposed to going through a more uh, kind of traditional peacemaking proceeding. And then preparing the next generations of peacemakers. If you're looking for options to train peacemakers, either from court or outside of the court, if you're looking, if you represent or, or know, have affiliations with your tribal universities about how to, to set up academic courses for those as well. And then we have a really brilliant panel on the reentry on re program. So that's going to be about how to help you bring people back into the community after they've been incarcerated. And you have lunch again on your own. And then we'll close with the traditional dispute resolution as healing um, growth in tribal uh, in, and empowering tribal sovereignty, which will be a kind of where we talk about what all this can mean for you as you start to take it back to the tribe that you are from or that you work for, and to be able to integrate that in a way that will really help them empower the tribes. All right, so I think that's going to get us going. Thank you, everyone.